So we just finished recognizing and reflecting on Dr. King and, and Coretta Scott King and the civil rights movement. Uh, meanwhile, in Houston, they all, they're really taking this free Deshaun thing seriously. Like, apparently, there was a march for Deshaun Watson. I don't know if the organizers Come on, strategically now. wanted to do it today. I mean, I know everybody's, you know, off or what have you, but, like, is there some kind of <laughs> what they're really trying to do, a, a Deshaun Watson march in Houston? <laughs> On MLK Day? <laughs> I mean, okay. Come on. So, uh, Come on. thankfully, Deshaun was like, hey, guys, I appreciate it, but uh, there's a pandemic going on right now. It's not that serious. <laughs> so, so we have heard from Deshaun directly. Um, we've heard from him, so, although there have been some uh, cryptic tweets you know. of his that, that we've had to decipher, but this was his direct love address that? to like, hey, guys, I appreciate it, but Settle down. This is what I told Stay you safe. before. Mask up. I yeah. told you before. Look, this is a totally different era of, of media information and, and connecting with fans. You know, old school. It, it, there's a guy we used to work with. I, I won't say any names, but you could probably figure out who said it. Like, who would be arrogant enough to say something like this to a football player? A, a writer we used to work with once went up to a football player and said, the difference between a drop pass and an overthrown ball is me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we're, we're long past that era when he would yeah. say that. Yeah. So guys can come out. If you hear your name in a news report, instantly go on Twitter, go on Instagram, uh, live, uh, Instagram Live. You can shut that thing down. Deshaun Watson really hadn't said a lot about these trade rumors and how upset he is and how he wants to go to Miami or any other place. But he came out very quickly and said, hey, I heard about this march. Yeah. Please don't do it. What does that tell you? I am convinced more than ever. Thanks for catching up, Adam Schefter and others. Uh, we told you a couple weeks ago. I told you. He's played his last uh, game with the Houston Texans. He's thrown his last pass for the Texans. And so that was one of the reports that came out over the weekend. I'm not surprised at all especially when you start to dig in. I'm just saying that on a gut feeling. I didn't have any, I don't have the sources that Schefter has. I'm not tripping. But I said it on a gut feeling. When you start to dig in, Mike, and find out what Jack Easterby is all about and some of the alliances, reportedly, some of the alliances that he has made and some of the people who have been ushered out of the organization, I can see the frustration of Deshaun Watson. I can understand it. Well, well, let me, well, let me, um, let me get some of that too, because you said in no uncertain terms, he's done. He's done in Texas, in Houston, with the Texans. I was like, I was like, if you're the Texans, you can't trade him. It's early, you know. He'll, you know, he's he's frustrated because he's at home, uh, as opposed to playing in the playoffs right now after a great season he had. But they went four and twelve. I'm like, there's still time to work this out. You know, I, I think I was uh, being too practical, number one, from a team standpoint. I think I was guilty of that. And I think I underestimated just how uh, betrayed he felt by being lied to, being told one thing and the organization doing another. Yet again, see, it's not an isolated incident. It's a pattern. This, mm. this, is, a, this is part of the culture of the Texans, is saying one thing and doing another. Uh, and not not putting players first. It's just it's an organizational dysfunction that's 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 worn on a lot of people. You know, I mean, I get Andre Johnson spoke on it, uh, which DeAndre Hopkins co-signed. Ed Reed spoke on it when he talked about man Master Tesfati for untold stories. So what's crazy though is if the Texans don't offer or solicit, I should say, Deshaun Watson's input on the process, we're not here. We're not here. This does Deshaun Watson is is soldiering on. I'm not sure. And playing I'm I'm that I can I'm telling you that. Take ex, right, accept okay, my representation right. on that. Accept my representation oh, that I got you. that this is this is this this move right here is a result of them saying, hey, we want you to be involved and then not, not keeping their word on that. Now, it, it, but it was the straw that broke the camel's back 
the, the, the camel was already tired, but the camel would have kept walking. This one right here is just like, oh, okay, you know what? That's it. But even, but I'm saying, Michael, you called it from Jump Street. And I was like, man, they can figure this out. They can work this out somehow. You know, I mean, it just, they, they, there's no way, there's no way you let him out the door. But the truth of the matter is they may not have much of a choice because he seems to be more dug in than I, than I realized. I mean, if the sense in the organization is that, not only the organization, but around the league is that he's done, and if he's willing to withhold his services, you know, this offseason and beyond, potentially, do they have much of a choice? Because you can pick this, you, you can engage in this kind of standoff with a wide receiver. You can engage in this kind of standoff, you know, with the, with a defensive back or just a or defensive player. You can't. You, this this doesn't happen. You can't survive being at odds with your quarterback, especially when the people are behind your quarterback. Not just the people. Not just the people in the streets of Houston. Not just people yeah. across the country. Not just the people Players. in the media, but the people in your own locker room are behind right. the quarterback here when the only member of the ring of honor for this organization, Andre Johnson, dusted off his Twitter account to be like, stand and your was, ground. And naming names. Naming names. naming names, too. So, the, here, now, so here is the good news. That, if there, here's the good news that I saw. Here's the development. So where do we go from here? To quote Dr. King. Where do we go from here, right? Um, his last book. So... I saw another report that the Texans, Michael, have had internal conversations about what a trade would look like. So that's progress. That's progress because maybe, and again, I'll give it back to you because you, you said this from the beginning. Not only might this situation be untenable, but it may at this point be in their best interest, counterintuitive as that sounds. It may be in the Texans' best interest to explore what a potential trade could look like because this is going Come to on. dwarf Herschel Walker, Ricky Williams, RG3, whatever mammoth trade you can think of has nothing on this trade. And if Schefter's right, that the feeling around the league is that he's done. Yeah. It ain't just the Dolphins. It ain't just the Jets. I saw Ian Rappaport throughout the Panthers. Now we can start the bidding war. And Keep now it gets up. really interesting. The price just went up. It's, the more people know about it, because recognize, Michael, he has not asked for a trade. He I has not that. asked for a trade. He has not done that yet. He has not publicly or privately demanded a trade. They know he wants to be traded. And they know he would waive his no trade clause. But you, I, I think I'm just saying, like to say, Michael, you might have been right all along, is that it, it may not be up to them. I don't know that they can play. They can, they yeah. can afford to play hardball because I don't think that's a game that they're going to win. This is so interesting. They should stop having those internal conversations. Uh, let's get out of this. Get out of this echo chamber and let's start making some calls around the league or accepting the calls that are coming in because I know they're coming in. You hear about a 25 year old quarterback who is great, who is a top top five talent in this league and he's unhappy, and he's got a no-trade clause, so he's got a little bit more control, too, um, of where he can go, where he will go, where he won't go. You don't know what kind of compensation teams are going to offer you. You've got to just go out. Look, I I'll put it this way. I doubt it, but it's Jacksonville. It's the number one pick and play for the Houston Texans. Would Jacksonville say, yes, we will give you the number one pick we will take Deshaun Watson over Trevor Lawrence. Maybe they would. Maybe they made up their minds. I, that's not a Trevor trade Lawrence I would make, guy. though. I would I, on either side. I would make that trade. I would make that trade on either side. Because I'm just, I'm uh, just not trying to live with why? that twice a year. Because I'm not trying to live with that twice a year. Okay. Like in, All right. in, in either so then, context, for either I mean, if I'm the Texans, fair. I am that's not fair. trying to send Deshaun to Jacksonville. And if I'm yeah. the Jaguars, 
I'm like, I, you know, I don't. What else you want besides the number one pick? Just straight up. I mean, <laughs> I'm not trying to help yeah, y'all right. get back to relevance by giving. You right. know, no, That's I'm not fair. helping you out. You made That's that bed, you sleep in it. You know what I mean? But you start, you start, you start moving. But I get what you draft board. The, pr the price you can't. Too, the price is not too high. Number two, number yeah, three. You look at, you look at number two. You look at two. The Jets, um, yeah. Miami. Uh, the Jets can use them. Miami could use them. So you see, you, you keep going up, and there's you. There are a handful of teams, and there's some teams we're not even talking about 49ers. that would love to have Deshaun Watson. So I, I think I think he will. I think he will go. And Houston has an opportunity. Uh, not, not that I believe in the organization, but Houston has an opportunity to reset itself because this will be this will be the biggest trade uh, ever. Probably, probably. Ever. I don't know about ever. NFL history. Because there's been some big ones. Herschel was huge. Baby. You think it's bigger than Hershey? Vegas? I think it will be. I think, and I think your hometown be. team, remember Mike Dick told everybody, Ricky, I trade my uh, whole draft for Ricky Williams. And they yeah. said, okay, no, I, I think it we'll will take be. your draft. I think it will be. I think it'll be bigger. Because because typically, I mean, okay, you see, you, we've seen veteran players get traded, but not 25-year-old elite quarterbacks. Not, not, not like this guy. Yeah. Typically, those mammoth trades are around the draft. And around somebody's potential, so it's around the time RG3, to do it. It's around Ricky Williams. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, uh, it's, it's it's involving draft picks, as draft in like picks. players that haven't put on a uniform yet. Yeah. Like like Mike Dicker was convinced that Ricky Williams was gonna save the same. So it's my whole draft for Ricky Williams, you know, RG three Washington, you know, gave up a haul to the Rams to get up to number two for RG three. You have a guy who just led the league in passing yards, you know, who had a, a season unlike anybody else. For a for a team that was four and twelve, that's that we've never seen that that you know that disconnect between an individual's court or individual quarterback's performance and his team's record. It's, it's mind blowing what he did this year under the circumstances. Hey, welcome, so welcome I, I to Houston. I think it'll be the biggest trade ever. Welcome to Houston, Nick Casario. Uh, nice job, well, and he got paid. But it, it, it but he, he but he does he did, but he but he does get to wipe the slate clean. But I do I do want to say this though, I do have. I do have one way of salvaging this because I'm, I'm gonna stick to the. I, I'm still gonna believe it when I see it. Having said all that, I, I, I'm with you that it, it it seems like it's too far gone. Like he's done, done. Okay. How do because, we salvage? How, he, how do we salvage he, this relationship? He's, he's Come done. On, tell me, counselor. He, so if I'm the Texans, I, yes, I, I, I realize it. Wait, this is real. He's this isn't just some temper tantrum. He's legit. Mm -hmm moved on from our organization. Um, if I'm the Texans, while I'm interested in hearing what people may offer, I go back to what I've been saying at the beginning. There, there's, not, there's no package that would make me happy about trading Deshaun Watson. There's nothing you could offer me that would make me feel good about it because all those picks, which I said are just, you know, the ego, uh, food for the egos of general manager, general managers, None of those picks are sure things the way he is, right? So the thing that's on our side is time. Deshaun's in a rush to leave. These other teams are in a rush to acquire him, especially prior to the draft. That's what teams like Miami, you know, that's, that's where their capital is, right? But we're not playing any games anytime soon. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.